The video was a long time coming, and I always wanted to cover Lithuanian history on this channel, and finally I am doing it. I shall be ranking all 50 free Lithuanian rulers throughout the entire Lithuanian history. Disclaimer though, I have left out several USSR leaders, which led for like a day or some shit, so basically they are completely irrelevant. How did I rank all the rulers, you might ask? I ranked by the good and bad they did to the country, and what symbolic meaning they left for the nation. A lot of the ranking was done on my own accord, so feel free to criticize some decisions I have made here. Now don't be surprised that I value rulers who did nothing, but at least didn't fuck the country up. Unlike rulers who purposely did horrible shit to the country without doing anything good to it. Before we get into this video, I just want to mention that we have a Discord server which you can join and hang out in. We communicate with one another every single day and the environment is friendly and goofy. If you're interested, join us. Subscribe to, the, to my channel and like this video or dislike it. Anyways, without further ado, let's start. My pants below, create, explore, expand, concord. I came, I saw, I came, I saw, I praise the Lord, then break the law. I take what's mine, then take some more. It rains, it pours, it rains, it pours. So, coming in at number 53, we have Adrian von Renteln. During the years of 1941-44, to 44, Lithuania was occupied by the Nazis. The territory of Lithuania was part of Reich Commissariat Osland. Osland was divided into four territories, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and White Ruthenia, which was Belarus. Anyways, a Adrian led the Lithuanian part for the whole time. Oh my boy, Ad he proceeded to slaughter countless numbers of Jews, order their executions, strengthen and construct ghettos for them. He's responsible for the deaths of over 200,000 Jews in Lithuania. So yeah, your average Nazi loser. Coming in at number 52, we have Henry I of the Valois dynasty. He was elected into the throne, his brother died who controlled the French throne, saw an opening, literally abandoned the Commonwealth without telling anyone just to seize the French throne. Total bozo, I'm not gonna lie. Number 51, Justus Poleckis, came into power after Antanas Merkis gave up power to him. He later resigned from his president post and became basically a prime minister of the Lithuanian Soviet Socialist Republic till the 1960s. During his time as Prime Minister, he ordered the deportation of over 160,000 Lithuanians. He was closely allied to the NKVD. The reason why I didn't put him lower was because of Antana Sniechkus. Anyways, what an ass. Uh, coming in at number 50, we have John II Casimir, ruler of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Was the ruler during the Deluge, 95% of the entire country of the Commonwealth was occupied by Russia and Sweden. He's basically responsible for it. It is entirely Poland's fault this time because they could have negotiated with the Cossacks and everything could have gone fine. Due to the deluge, the Commonwealth was massively devastated. Western Lithuania was looted by Sweden. Meanwhile, our capital Vilnius was essentially sacked by Russian forces. So yeah, crap ruler, that's all I can say. Number 49, Michael I, a crappy ruler. Everywhere he went, there was failure after failure. The only reason he isn't lower was, was, was due to Sobieski, saving his dumbass everywhere he went. Sobieski defeated the Ottomans in battle. This bozo accepted peace which humiliated Poland, although it all be reverted during Sobieski's rule. Thank God after his rule, Sobieski came into power. Number 48, Jonas Stugaitis, a very notable fellow, only led Lithuania for an outstanding six hours. That's literally it. Number 47, Rolandas Paxas, was elected president of Lithuania in 2003 and almost immediately got impeached because he has ties to the Russian Mafia and granting a Russian Mafia dude citizenship without authorization from the state. He was removed from power and banned from ever attempting to gain political power. Number 46, Antanas Merkis, the real last official president of the interwar Lithuania. Antanas Smetona made him president 
after he fled the country. Merkis' reign was essentially being USSR's bitch, betraying fellow Lithuanians to the communists and giving up power peacefully. He was then deported to Siberia and died in the Russian SSR. Coming in at number 45, we have Yonutis, the Grand Duke between total Giga Chad rulers during that time. His reign was very insignificant, but rather stable. He was later deposed by both Algirdas and Kastutis. Number 44, Ringodas Songaila, one of the last Lithuanian SSR leaders. He led for an extremely short time and was opposed to Gorbachev's reforms. Hardliner commie that didn't do shit. So yeah, that's about it. Oh yeah, this bozo comes from my home city, Klebeda, so we have something to be ashamed of, I guess. Coming in at number 43, we have Mindogas II, planned puppet monarch by Kaiser Germany after World War I. Lithuanians didn't agree to a monarchy and later went a democratic path. He never stepped foot into Lithuania. So yeah, he didn't do anything. Number 42, Patras Grishkevichus. Succeeded Sniechkus, a Brezhnevite basically, led the USSR in a status quo stance like Brezhnev did. That's basically it. Number 41, Kazis Grinius, last democratically elected president of the interwar Lithuania. Didn't do much during his presidency, was then deposed by Antanas Matona. Number 40, Augustus III, puppet ruler. He turned the Commonwealth into a Russian protectorate basically. Did nothing but suck Russian dick. That's about it. Number 39, Stanislaus I, another puppet ruler, this time placed by Sweden, didn't do much, was deposed, then gained power again, and was deposed again. Had other rulerships, didn't do much. Number 438, Augustus II, uh, came into power, deposed, came into power again, deposed again. Stanislaus and Augustus fought against one another in some sort of a civil war backed by other nations. The Commonwealth elective monarchy system was truly shit, if we're being fair. Oh, and by the way, was shit as a ruler besides in Saxony where he first led. Number 37, Anna. The only female ruler here besides another president we're going to talk about. She was basically an interregnum ruler. Interregnum means uh, a person who's in charge until we can elect a new ruler. And basically, that's what it means. After Bozo Henry Valois abandoned the Commonwealth did some minor infrastructure projects and gave up the throne. Pretty decent for a temporary ruler, ruler to be honest, so yeah. Number 36, Butvidas. <laughs> Tried to defend the Grand Duchy against the Teutonic Knights, and that's about it. Almost nothing is known about him, but I'm gonna judge him, he was a rather mid-ruler, so yeah. Number 35, Domantas. <laughs> Grand Duke during the periods where Lithuanian history was most poorly written. It is known that he had committed military campaigns against several S Eastern Slavic nations, such as Tver. A United Slavic coalition either captured or killed him. So yeah, an ambitious ruler with a pretty big failure in the end, if you ask me. Number 34, Stanislaus II Augustus. And okay, for Poland he would probably be even lower, but let me explain. If you haven't caught on to it yet, he was the last king and grand duke of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, placed into the throne by Russians. Interestingly, even when he was a puppet ruler, he actually tried to reform and strengthen the Commonwealth. He managed to end the nobility dominance and establish a stronger ruler power, created the first constitution in Europe and one of the first in the world. But, but, but by then, it was way too late. The Commonwealth was partitioned and he was held captive till his death by Russia. Number 33, Valda Sadomkus, the first modern Lithuanian president that served two terms, had a lot of diplomatic ventures across the world, his legacy is relatively res respected amongst Lithuanians, although he was rather cautious, he served his time without really any scandals and kept Lithuania rather stable during his rule. Number 32, Vitotas Landsbergis, the first leader of post-USSR Lithuania. I personally do not like this person. History has rewritten him on a good note while removing the bad sides about him. Like, the fact he seized power in the Sayudis, any, you know, elections or anything, just through manipulation. He introduced some shitty currency for a year or two, which had zero value. Lithuania was very dangerous during this time, lots of criminal organizations and mafias. My dad was even beaten half to death during that time, as an example. So yeah, but he was responsible for Lithuania's re-establishment of independence. Lithuania was the first SSR to completely declare independence and he resisted USSR attempts to re-establish control till the end of the USSR. So yeah, he's a mixed bag to be fair. 
Number 31, Antanas Snechkus. Let me make this clear, I hate this dude completely. He was responsible for the deportations of hundreds of thousands of Lithuanians and the genocides that the USSR did upon the Lithuanian people. But he was also responsible for finally industrializing Lithuania. During his reign, the population of Lithuania exploded and grew massively. Lots of factories, government-owned businesses opened in Lithuania. So yeah, an evil monster, but relatively fine in a different sense. Number 30, Skirgaila. The governor of Lithuania after Yogaila made the union of Krevo, Fengi, and went to marry Jadwiga. He was really unpopular with the people and tried to hold on to his power. Sucked Yogaila's dick non-stop. Was deposed by Vitotas and yeah, in compensation got a few territories to govern till he died. Number 29, Gitanas Noseda. Oh yes, the current president of Lithuania as of 2022. Before he was an economist and nothing more. During the 2019 elections he ran as an independent and people chose him for the for the picture he painted upon himself during the elections. People had hopes for him. I myself wanted him to win, which he did, but what came up was a different answer. He is a man staunchly for the status quo and is very indecisive. He holds absolutely no charisma or show of dominance or strength. This made the Samus entirely rule the country from within with almost no hindrance. Today I definitely don't like him because he's just a weak ruler if we're being honest. Number 28, Shvitrigaila. Successor to Vitotas, staunchly anti-Polish, didn't do much besides fight against Sigismund for power in a civil war. Was defeated, although he survived, although he never gained back his power, even if he wished so too. Number 27, Sigismund Kestutaitis. Defeated Shvitrigaila, also had the same mindset to try and remove Polish influence over Lithuania but was assassinated by Shvitrigaila supporters. Funny twist how two men wanted the same thing, but ended up killing the other side for power and control. Number 26, Adolfus Ramanauskas. Not really a president or ruler, he took charge of the Lithuanian partisans and continued the fight for several more years. He was a devout diehard loyalist for the Lithuanian independence and fought till the very end. Only very recently, his remains were rediscovered. The Lithuanian partisans managed to push the ineffective collectivization laws back a few years and created a strong legacy and nationalist agenda for today's Lithuanians to look upon towards. Number 25, Aleksandr Stulginskis. Second president of the interwar democratic Lithuania. Was more diplomatic, didn't do much significant during his rule. He was just mainly a political doing, ruler doing the usual political status quo stuff. So yeah, God, modern rulers have barely any history written about what they did. It's annoying. Number 20, Alexander Yegelion. One of the last Yegelions, he was rather not so good because of the unlucky situation he found himself in. Lithuania all alone, all alone had to fight the massively strengthened Grand Duchy of Mos Muscovy in long, brutal wars. Obviously, when Lithuania stopped being expansive and aggressive, their military tradition and capabilities diminished. Alexander was forced to give up huge amounts of the country to Muscovy, which was a humiliation and it only strengthened Lithuania's ties to Poland. Oh, and he was the last Lithuanian native ruler, so yeah. Number 23, Casimir the Yejelan, the man who finally brought the Teutonic Order under his control fully as a vassal state. Was his, this was his main achievement. Casimir, unlike other loser-ass Poles, actually learned the Lithuanian language and its customs and gave the Lithuanians more autonomy than Antis. His son became the king of Hungary. He had dynastic ties to Bohemia. Basically, the Jagiellonian dynasty became more well-known because of him. He attempted to, to defeat Muscovy by allying the Great Horde, but it failed. Overall, he was a rather mid-ruler that kept both Poland and Lithuania stable wh where he led. Sadly, after him, Lithuania would experience the biggest territorial loss ever. Number 22, Algirdas Brazowski, the last leader of Lithuanian Soviet Socialist Republic and the president of Lithuania. Brazauskas wished reform during the USSR times and was a supporter of Gorbachev. He and Landsbergis cooperated very closely together. He was the first official president of the post-USSR Lithuania. 
His reign was rather uneventful. It was mainly diplomatic missions, since the president had no longer really held any power in the internal affairs. So most of the wild 90s blame can be put on Lansbury. Number 21, Jonas Geometis. Elected ruler of the Lithuanian partisans from 1943 and on, was declared an official president of Lithuania by Seimas, has the only military academy in Lithuania named after him. He was more of a symbol to modern Lithuania of resistance, so I shall put him higher for his heroism. Sacrificed for Lithuania, he is a hero that deserves all the respect. Number 20. Weishel. A rather he and Schwarn fought against the rivals and defend defended their borders. Not much is known about his rule besides he was into a monk life. He was the last ruler from the House of Mindogas, Lithuania. He retired to a monastic life and then was murdered by Schwarn's brother for not giving him a power too, which is rather stupid, but whatever. Number 19, Benyota, the dude who assassinated Mindogas and usurped the throne. <laughs> he reverted Voinia back to paganism and to a grand duchy, only ruled for a year before being deposed by Voishvilkas. Sadly, nothing else is known about him. I can understand his territorial ambitions to push the Teutons out, but he was mainly unsuccessful in that category. Number 18, Kigdolia Gribovskaita. The first female president of Lithuania from 2009 all the way to 2019. She is by far the best modern Lithuania's president. She is ranked number one in all polls on presidents. Her leadership was strong and stable. Lithuania had to endure a brain drain, which is people leaving the country, but her reign was rather stable. She took over Lithuania in an economic crisis and recovered the economy almost instantly. Lithuania was one of the fastest countries to recover from the global market crash of 2009. Lithuania was being massively westernized under her reign. EU partners described her as a strong, charismatic woman that was liked by all. Giga Chad woman. Shame she only had two terms. Number 17, Tana Smetona. The first president of Lithuanian dictator of Lithuania from 1926 all the way to 1940. His first presidency wasn't really significant as the Seimas held most of the power. He was then removed from office due to democratic st stuff, and he aligned himself with the Lithuanian Nationalist Union, which was relatively unpopular. He managed to get the army on his side, and on the night of 1926, he seized power. His reign was rather stable-ish. He resumed the state of war with Poland, silenced political opponents, and executed communists. Unlike other rulers during that time, he decided to uphold the agrarian society of Lithuania because that was his main voting bloc. Of course, he was allowed limited industrialization, but there was almost no foreign investment in Lithuania. Smetona refused to compromise and adapt during the stock market crash. Lithuania's quality of life was one of the lowest in Europe during that time. All right. Let's cut some slack for the dude. He led Lithuania in a relatively stable state and endured strong order under his rule. Yes, he did flee the country, but any person who had something to lose would also flee. He is revered and praised by many Lithuanian nationalists, and I especially adore his political ideology myself. His legacy was big for Lithuania, let's face it. If you ever think of interwar Lithuania, Smetona would probably be the first to come in mind. Number 16, Butigaidis, the first undisputed member of the Gediminid dynasty. He built strong fortifications along the Neman Lid River to combat Teutonic Order's expansion. Without his construction of those forts, maybe there wouldn't be a Grand Duchy anymore. He had two Gigachad sons, which heavily helped Lithuania massively improve. Overall, a pretty okay ruler first time, so yeah. Number 15, Yogaila. After Aligirdas' death, was cooed by Kestutis and then retook the throne. Yogaila is most known for Christianizing Lithuania and forming the Union of Krebo with Poland. The Union with Poland changed the history of Lithuania to a different path. I personally have a big dislike for Yogaila because he sold Lithuania to Poland, most likely ordered the death of Gestutis and ended the last pagan state in Europe. Probably for the greater good though, he also split, split from the Gediman dynasty and from the Jelonian dynasty which ruled a century or so. Number 14, Schwar. Not much is known about his rule. He was, a, he was a Slav that took over the Grand Duke position of Lithuania during the decades of long power struggle. 
He is mainly known for expanding Lithuania during his reign and strengthening the country. Like, uh, nothing bad was written about him, and he was a rather unknown. A Ruthenian which strengthened our country and prepared it for the future Gigachad rulers. That's who he was basically. Number 13, Sigismund I. A great administrator, war leader, and an important person responsible for a golden age in Polish culture, arts, and brought the Renaissance to Polish lands. Defeated the Moldavians and under his rule, Lithuania achieved the biggest victory ever in our history, Battle of Orsha. About 25 Lithuanian allied troops faced almost 80 or so thousand Russian forces. Lithuania only sustained 500 casualties, where Russia lost 40,000 men, and 5,000 of them were captured. This was by far the greatest victory in Lithuanian history. It's shocking that not many Lithuanians know about this battle, instead looking at Grunwald. Number 12, Kestutis, ruler of a diarchy style Lithuania with Algirdas. He was in charge of whatever's in the west of Lithuania. Fiercely defended Lithuania against the Teutons and engaged in diplomacy in the west. He ensured Lithuania's stability in the west and its notoriety. After Algirdas' death, Yogala took over but did some bad shit. So he deposed him and assumed the throne. He then in a standoff against Yogala, was tricked to travel to negotiate and was captured and died in captivity. Most likely he was murdered since Gigachad like him can die like that bro. Number 11, Sigismund II Augustus, the man who formed the Union of Lublin. A very controversial person by him as this ended the independence of Lithuania and made them a part of a Polish dominated nation. But if not for this union, the Livonian War would have never been won. He is also known for his affairs with three of his wives, which are very documented and learned by students at schools. So yeah, a really good administrator too. Number 10, Stepan Bator, regarded to be one of the best rulers in Commonwealth history, he came from Hungarian Transylvania and assumed the throne during the Livonian Wars. He is most highly regarded for defending the Commonwealth's borders against Russia and signing a highly favorable peace with Russia which granted a lot of territory to the Commonwealth. Lithuania recovered some lost territory because of this. A good, good ruler, so yeah. Number 9, Vladislav IV, formed the Lithuanian Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth's navy kept the commonwealth stable under his watch. He was the ruler before the deluge happened and his rule was very stable for the commonwealth, but in my opinion he could have given the Cossacks more rights and they would have never revolted. This dude literally died when the deluge started, which is ironic. He tried to seize the Swedish throne but failed. He was also the Tsar of Russia during the time of troubles, where the commonwealth temporarily seized Moscow. Lots of achievements to be honest. Number 3 Danis. This Giga Chad killed not one, not two, but three Grand Masters of the Livonian Order. No wonder the Livonian Order became the vassal under the Teutonic Order and never recovered. He defeated a Mongol backed state, made incursions into Poland, Semigalians re revolted, and he took them over as they accepted his hegemony over them. Tridanus was the first ruler to have ever died of natural causes. Meanwhile, all the previous ones were either assassinated or abdicated. Number 7, Bitanis, the first long-lasting ruler of Lithuania. He basically marks the end of the power struggle period of the early Grand Duchy. Bitanis was known for his extremely aggressive stance towards foreign affairs. He was at constant war with neighbors and expanded Lithuania to restore lost Minugas' lands and raided other nations such as Poland. Vitanis was a really good ruler for his time. What's interesting is that he allied with the theocratic state of Riga, which was Catholic, and the Lithuanians and he himself were pagan. This alliance with Riga happened on several occasions, so yeah, warrior ruler basically. Number 6, John II Sobieski. Succeeded by the crappy Michael, Sobieski was the last great commonwealth ruler. He was a skilled military general, defeating the Ottomans countless of times and recovering the commonwealth in some form. His leadership was outstanding and very prestigious for the decaying country. If I was ranking Polish rulers, Sobieski would probably be number one. So yeah.
Number five, Mendungas, the first and only king and the founder of Lithuania. Mendungas' reign was rather eventful and chaotic. Even when founding the country, Mendungas already engaged in conquest against the Slavs and managed to actually conquer some states. He tried to Christianize Lithuania, which failed, and he had many rivals. They murdered him, reverted, reverted Lithuania back to paganism, and turned it into a grand duchy. Still, Mendogas' coronation is a national holiday for Lithuania to this very Number 4. Sigismund III. Sigismund is most re mostly responsible for capturing Moscow and expanding the Commonwealth's borders to their absolute limits. The Commonwealth experienced a golden age during his rule, and he was just a really great ruler, if we're being honest. Number 3. Vitotas the Great. The only ruler to hold the title the Great expanded Lithuania to its absolute limits by 1430 massively centralized Lithuania and opposed Polish hegemony over Lithuania whenever possible. Vitotas would be number one if not for his crushing defeat against the Golden Horde, where he almost himself died. Vitotas went to the Teutonic Order three times to ask for help, which he then received. Backstabbed them every single time, asserted his dominance against Jogaila, and essentially delayed the subjugation of Lithuania to Poland. He is the reason for the victory of the Battle of Grunwald, where he copied the Tatar tactic of a feigned retreat and later crushed the Teutonic Order forever. He is a gigachad of gigachads, although his rule was romanticized by the 19th century from Lithuanian national revival writers, but that's okay. We shall never forget this amazing ruler. His title is fully deserved. Number two, Aligirdas, the ultimate Sigma male when it comes to conquest. This monster of baseness literally, uh, literally doubled Lithuania's size. He was the first to destroy the Golan Horde's hegemony over the Slavs at the Battle of Blue Waters. He wished to conquer all of the Slavs, he even besieged Moscow three times and asserted Lithuania's dominance over Eastern European politics. Algirdas was without a doubt the ruler which expanded Lithuania the most during his reign. Number 1. Gediminas, without a doubt the best ruler in Lithuanian history. Gediminas was never a good military leader, but he was sure an amazing diplomat and skilled administrator. He founded the capital of Lithuania, Vilnius. He invited merchants, builders, and craftsmen to Lithuania. He taught Lithuanians to build a brick fort instead of wood. Gediminas expanded Lithuania. Gediminas almost managed to end the Teutonic Order support from the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope, but it narrowly failed. Gediminas defended Lithuania and founded the great chain of rulers that made Lithuania really good. His Gediminas dynasty was mostly filled with really good rulers. Gediminas is the best ruler of Lithuania, in my personal opinion. And that does it. Now, if there was a tier list, I would rank a lot of these rulers on either not having enough information on how they led, or I'll just put them in average rulers tier, or even crappy ones. I don't know, because a lot of them were pretty men. Now, nearing the top, we finally started having far better rulers, as you can see which committed some of the greatest achievements for Lithuania. There were lots of non-Lithuanian rulers, but they also led us and we must not forget about them, as they're a part of our history for one reason or the other. Thank you for watching this video. It took a while to make this video, but I powered through it and completed it. Anyways, have a good one.